lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Dear Lord, I pray that, as, that many Christians did that Hillary Clinton would not win. And I know it's your grace that that wicked baby butchering woman was not elected. Lord God, I don't know about Donald Trump, but I know Mike Pence is a believer. Please may he have the influence over Donald Trump including moral issues, Lord God, like homosexuality and abortion. Please may he not waver, Lord God. Please bless him and strengthen him, guide him and direct him, Lord God. Give him wisdom and courage, but let him be true to your principles and let him listen to the counsel of believers like Mike Pence and like, like uh, Governor Huckabee and other Christians Lord, around him. Please, Lord God, please may the fact that he is multiple divorced and remarried and worldly and all egotistical, please, Lord, despite that, you can use him for your purpose. Please give him wise men around him, godly men led by your principles who will do the right thing for the country at these dire times. May he not pursue laws that will hurt Christians, but defend the rights of Christians, as he said, and oppose abortion, as he said, and remained loyal to the American relationship with Israel, as he said. Please may he not be like the other politicians who say one thing and do another and lie to us. Be with him, Lord God. And again, thank you that this woman was stopped. Thank you for stopping her, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 It says in the book of Daniel that God establishes kings and removes them. It is God's providence that Mr. Trump has won. Now, because God establishes a leader, that does not necessarily prove it is a good thing. It just means that God has a purpose in it. For instance, Zionism was not a popular movement. It would not have happened had it not been for two terrible leaders, Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. When Stalin came to power in Russia, the Jewish socialists supported Zionism to try to make an alternative form of socialism to Sovietism and went to Israel. That wouldn't have happened had a tyrant like Stalin not come to power. The international community in the UN never would have voted for petition and reestablished the nation Israel had it not been for Hitler's Holocaust. The support of the U.S. government for Zionism would not have happened after the Second World War in the late 1940s had it not been for the Holocaust. But more than that, even the support of many liberal and reformed Jews who called their synagogues temples, indicating they did not see a return to Jerusalem, but the promised land was America, wherever they were, that's where their temple was. These things only changed, and Zionism only came about, and Israel was only reborn as a nation because of wicked leaders. Because God establishes a leader, it doesn't necessarily mean he's a good one. It just means that God will bring his purposes out of it, which will ultimately work for the good. Now, I to never use the ministry as a platform to endorse a political candidate, but I do rejoice and praise God that that wicked, wicked woman was not elected. She is a true daughter of Jezebel in the modern sense of the word. She's a despicable, baby-butchering woman, as you described her. Thank God she was not elected. Thank God. And thank God now there's the prospect of dismantling the disgusting legacy of Barack Obama, who put the White House in the colors of the homosexual flag to celebrate the Supreme Court decision on same-sex marriage. Again, a wicked, wicked man. May his legacy rot in the gutter of history where it belongs. Concerning Mr. Trump, he's on his fourth marriage, he's arrogant, he's egotistical, but God put him there. The early Christians even prayed for the Roman emperors. 
we're told this in <clears throat> the New Testament, and we're commanded to pray for those in authority that we may lead peaceable lives. Mr. Pence, however, is a believer. Vice President Pence is a believer. He's a saved Christian, an ex-Roman Catholic who's became a believer, and his family are committed believers. Let us pray for Mr. Trump, and let us pray that the influence of Mr. Pence will permeate his administration and his policies on moral issues, on relations with Israel, and also just divine guidance and being led by biblical principles in all areas of his administration, strategically, economically, and so forth. God has placed him there at this time, and he has saved America from a terrible, terrible fate. If Hillary Clinton had become president, the kind of people she would have appointed to the Supreme Court would have hastened the persecution of Christians that is already underway due to the Supreme Court actions uh, of, of these agenda is judges who think the Supreme Court is the supreme being. And it's getting worse. This could be a period of respite. God has shown mercy to Great Britain with Brexit. And now he has shown mercy, undeserved mercy, to both Britain and now America. We need to pray for Mr. Trump. Seriously pray for him. Whether you like him or not, we need to pray for him. He knows he was elected to a large degree with the support of evangelical Christians in certain states that he carried. There was a lot of evangelicals who voted for him, but also prayed for him, um, essentially because they didn't like Hillary Clinton for obvious reasons. He's aware of that. He's aware of his indebtedness to the Christian vote. He's quite conscious of it. And his vice president is a committed believer. We need to pray for Mr. Trump. I can't stress the importance of that. Like many people, you know, I see his victory as not so much a victory for Mr. Trump, but a defeat for Hillary Clinton, just because she's so wicked. She believed in partial birth, late-term abortion up to the day before a baby would be born in the ninth month, ninth month gestation, you have a right to kill it, to do a, a forcep to force delivery, a suboccipital puncture, insert a suction catheter into the baby's cranium and suck its brains out while well, it's still alive. This is Hillary Clinton. This was also Barack Obama, and it was certainly Bill Clinton. These people are butchers. These people are godless, wicked people. Mr. Trump publicly flipped his position on abortion. May he not be another Ronald Reagan who lied to us. Ronald Reagan was a, categorically a liar. He ran on a pro-life platform, and not only did he not do anything that would have opposed the tide of abortion, but after becoming president, he appointed a pro-abortion judge to the Supreme Court. He appointed the Republican judge, Sandra Day O'Connor, who was pro-abortion. Ronald Reagan was an out-and-out -out liar. He betrayed Christian America when he appointed this abortion judge. It was Sandra Day O'Connor who wrote the Supreme Court's decision ordering the Ten Commandments out of the judicial building in Alabama. First God's order, you know, first God is ordered out of the classroom, then God is ordered out of the maternity ward, now he's ordered out of the courts and, ju and judicial buildings. That, that, that was Reagan's appointee. It was Sandra Day O'Connor who opened the door the same-sex marriage when she wrote the Supreme Court's decision outlawing the Texas anti-sodomy law. And right after that, the avalanche of same-sex marriage began because of Ronald Reagan and his lies and his betrayal of Christian America. It is a fact. She wrote those decisions and he appointed her after promising us he was pro-life. I hope that Mr. Trump does not demonstrate himself to be a traitor and a liar the way Ronald Reagan was. I do not respect the legacy of Ronald Reagan because he betrayed us and he lied. But we have to give Mr. Trump a fair chance. 
we have to wish him well, we have to pray for him. The betrayal of Israel to Iran and the betrayal of America to Iran, giving $150 billion to those committed to the destruction of Israel and of America, and he gives them $150 billion that was frozen assets. It puts them on a path to be able to develop nuclear weapons. America was betrayed to radical Islam by the Bush family, who betrayed us to the Saudi Arabian Salafists, the Wahhab. Then America is betrayed by Barack Obama, John Kerry, and Hillary Clinton to Iran, the Shia. We have to pray that Mr. Trump does not do these things. God said to Abraham and promised Abraham and the other patriarchs, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. By pandering to radical Islam that supports terror, that carries out terror, nations that fund terror, like Saudi Arabia, who fund radicalism that results in terror, even September 11th, but who fund nations that <clears throat> carry out jihad against Israel and who fund terrorist organizations. This is what Iran does. This is what Saudi Arabia has done with the blessings of the Bush administration and the blessings of the Obama administration. That kind of thing is sure to bring God's judgment on America. I will curse them that curse thee. I don't want God's judgment to come on America. I want God to bless America for the way it treats Israel and the Jews. And for the way that these Muslim countries, Iran and Saudi Arabia, persecute Christians. And I've, I've been to many Muslim countries, including Saudi Arabia. For the American government and the British government to pander to these Islamic regimes as if they're our friends, while they're persecuting our brethren in Christ, this has been a disgrace and a betrayal. I pray that Mr. Trump will stop these policies of the establishment. Now again, our purposes are not political. We simply look at these events in light of prophecy. This was not so much about Democrat and Republican or even conservative and liberal. It was about the globalists versus the nationalists. It was about the ordinary people, the populace, uh, populist versus the elite. Barack Obama, <clears throat> Hillary Clinton, the Bush family, they all represent the elite, the investment bankers, international interests in the corporate world, all of them. Now, they do that to the detriment of ordinary people. I don't say that as a political statement, I just say it as an observation. The elitist Goldman Sachs, the banking establishment, people like this, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist who's absorbed with the Illuminati, none of that. But there is no question that this election was a reaction by ordinary people against the investment bankers, against Wall Street, against the establishment, against the globalists. It is the American version of Brexit. The book of Daniel explains to us what's happening in the world. In Europe, they are desperate to make the iron stick to the clay. We see the kings of the north fighting the kings of the south, Islam raising up as a threat to Western civilization. We're watching the prophecies of Daniel being played out. For some reason, the God of Israel, the God of heaven, has given some respite, has given some, at least interim period of respite to the United Kingdom and to now to the United States. This is God's hand. This is God's mercy. He's doing it for a reason. We seriously need to pray for our leaders. To understand what's going on in the world, 
read the book of Daniel. It's coming to that kind of a scenario. I am praying every day that America, Britain, and the British Commonwealth, and Israel, that is the English-speaking democracies and Israel, for the sake of our fathers, will have some divine favor despite our sin and our rejection. Now that the second in command is a believer in the United States, let us pray that the true gospel will again be preached, that it will permeate the social fabric of America as an alternative to the heresy and apostasy coming out of so much of popular evangelicism. We have seen a reaction in the political realm, in the corridors of power, against the establishment in both Britain and America, in both London and Washington. May we see a similar reaction in the church of ordinary Christ-loving, biblically-based Christians rising up against the lies of the corrupt religious establishment misrepresenting itself as evangelical. May there be a reaction against the purpose-driven agenda, against the ecumenical sellout, against the neo-gnosticism and the mysticism. May there be an upsurge, a grassroot reaction of ordinary Christians. God has shown us this mercy in the political realm. May he show us this kind of mercy in the ecclesiastical realm. I don't know why the Lord has shown this mercy to Britain and America. We do not deserve it as nations. We've turned our backs on the faith, faith of our fathers. We've gone into apostasy. We have gone into moral debauchery of every kind. Things that would have been unthinkable less than a generation ago are now mainstream, and evangelical Christians, quote-unquote, whatever that means anymore, are in league with it so much of the time, including major leaders. People got fed up with the establishment in England. People got fed up with the establishment in America. It's time for Christians to get fed up with the establishment in what is supposed to be the body of Christ. May God bless, guide, and direct President Trump and Vice President Pence. May God have mercy on Great Britain and on the United States. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you.